Pentecost. We often think of Pentecost as the birthday of the church, a day to wear red, a day to debate just what speaking in tongues means. But it's much more than that. Yes, it is the day when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples accompanied by the rush of a violent wind with tongues of, as of fire resting on each one of them, the tongues of fire enabling them to speak in different languages, which is something that confuses some people and perhaps frightens other people. But in many ways, we have made Pentecost into a relatively tame event. <clears throat> Think about some of the strong winds that you have experienced in your life. Think of those, those, say, 50 or 60 mile an hour gusts of wind that you fear might take the roof off your house. Hurricane force winds start at 74 miles an hour. 50 to 60 is getting pretty close. The Spirit came accompanied by the rush of a violent wind. And because of the coming, coming of the Spirit, so much was changed. So much was transformed. Pentecost is about power. Not the kind of power that, say, makes an organ able to work or not. But it's about power. If Easter is accompanied by a great earthquake, then Pentecost is also filled with earthquake kind of power. So why do we in the church tend to be in the domestication business? Taming, reducing, limiting the power of God, the power of Jesus. Trying to make the coming of the Spirit somewhat manageable and controllable and calm. When the Spirit came with those tongues of fire, the people were confused and startled and perhaps more than a little bit scared. They didn't know what was going on. They hadn't heard all those sermons that we've been preaching for years. But then the disciples started to speak. And all those gathered there that day, all those names that you heard in there, what are they? Gathered from the ends of the earth. And they heard the disciples speaking in their own languages, able to be understood by those who had gathered from all over the world. And what were the disciples proclaiming? The mighty acts of God. God's deeds of power. Let me say that again. <clears throat> the disciples were proclaiming the mighty acts of God, God's deeds of power. These disciples, they've basically been cooped up in that upper room since Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. And okay, they did go to Galilee at the end of Matthew's gospel. John tells us they were in Galilee as well. But in Jerusalem, they pretty much stayed together in that upper room behind locked doors. Because they didn't know what was going to happen to them. They were praying. They were thinking. They were reflecting on Jesus' ministry. They were together and they were afraid. And the doors were closed until Pentecost. Now, we don't know all the details of how the Spirit descended upon the, people, the disciples. We assume that they were in that room behind the closed doors when that happened. <clears throat> Did the violent wind blow the doors of the room open? Maybe. Maybe. Or did the power of the Spirit cause the disciples to open the doors themselves to leave that room probably forever and go out into the midst of the people? But they went out. They left the room. This formerly 
formerly reclusive, secluded group of people boldly went out to the crowd to proclaim God's deeds of power. The closed doors were forever opened. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Not just give some energy, a kind of a spark. The Spirit transforms a formerly timid people into a bold people. Transforms a group of keep-to-themselves people into a people who go out and preach. Transforms one such as Peter, who after Jesus was arrested, denied knowing Jesus three times because Peter was afraid they might do the same thing to me they're doing to him and I'm not interested in that. I will say I don't know him. Now, that same Peter is the leader of the group and Peter is the one who gets up in front of a huge crowd of people and boldly proclaims that Jesus is Lord. Peter was transformed. All the disciples were transformed. So they were now living for the risen Christ. And they were going to proclaim that Jesus is Lord no matter what anybody else would do to them, including the authorities, the religious and political authorities who had conspired together to arrest and execute Jesus. The Spirit made those disciples bold. Pentecost is about power. And as part of Peter's sermon later in the, in the chapter, in the second chapter of Acts, he quotes the prophet Joel about people prophesying, young people seeing visions, and old people dreaming dreams. The power that filled the people at Pentecost was not just a power that enabled them to do things in the present, but a power that called them, led them, perhaps even pushed them to look to the future and to envision a new world based in the love and hope and peace and grace and justice of God in Jesus Christ. The power of the Spirit enabled them to dream of and to envision a world different, far different from the world of Rome and Roman power. A world that realized that the peace of God was far stronger and greater than Pax Romana. The power of the Spirit enabled them to envision a world that was not dependent on particular governments for security, but a people, a community that trusted in God for its ultimate security. The power of the Spirit enabled them to envision a world where the truth of God could not be silenced by any religious authority or any political authority because God's truth in Jesus Christ is eternal. All the kingdoms of the world are not. Pentecost is about the power to dream dreams and see visions about the, what the kingdom of God is right now. Not just something that is to come at the time that we join that heavenly community, communion of saints. <clears throat> right now, Camp Hill Presbyterian Church is in a bit of a transition time. I've been here now just about a year. And it's amazing to see how quickly I have moved up in the line of who has been here on the staff the longest. Aren't many people ahead of me now. <laughs> One year, it's amazing. And there are going to be other transitions as the church moves forward. The biggest transition being when the pastor nominating committee identifies the person they believe God is calling to be the next installed pastor of this church. With all of that transition, with all that relative uncertainty, it is easy for people to do 
in the words of what I read recently, I couldn't find the exact quote, but something like this. When people are facing the unknown, they sometimes revert back to what is known. Instead of moving forward, sometimes people or organizations go back to what they considered to be their safety or, or comfort zones. Not so with the coming of the Holy Spirit. The disciples left that which was known. They left that which was comfortable. And they were led forward in ministry to areas they did not know, to something that was anything but comfortable. Prior to Pentecost, they would have said, no way. But after the power of the Spirit came upon them and transformed them, they said yes to that new call of God, that new call of Christ on their lives. Camp Hill Presbyterian Church. <clears throat> the Spirit is leading you into the future, which I believe can be wonderfully bright and exciting and new. Yes, it might, might involve change. But that change is because of dreams and visions brought about by the power of the Holy Spirit. That power can, can, can transform people and can transform churches and can transform cultures and communities. So when you think about Pentecost, don't just think about church's birthdays or wearing red or speaking in tongues. Think about the power of the Spirit to transform timid disciples into bold disciples. Back then, and even now, the Spirit has been poured on all people to help them dream dreams and see visions and live in this world in the power of God's love and hope and grace and peace. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Mold us and shape us, empower us to be bold followers of Jesus. Not just in a sanctuary, but in this world as you lead us to go and dream dreams and see visions. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Amen.